Our vagabond camera takes us to beautiful Washington, D.C., the national capital of our United States, situated on the broad banks of the Potomac River. Living is pleasant and leisurely. For it is a city of formality and custom. Manners and courtesy are responsible for the well-ordered conduct of its daily affairs. The many fine restaurants of Washington are the delight of the Epicurean and the gourmet, where one may enjoy to the full the rare dishes of the Old South. Washington's beautiful homes have the quiet dignity of another day. Our trip would be incomplete if we neglected to visit the quiet, staid, and dignified residential section. It is with pride that we view hospitable Washington, friendly Washington, welcoming us to her doorstep, eagerly throwing wide her doors. I'm sorry, there are no vacancies. Positively no vacancies. I have a reservation. Oh, well, pardon me. Uh, what was the name, sir? Benjamin Dingle. Senator Noonan made the reservation. Well, just a moment, Mr. Dingo. Oh, yes, we have the reservation. Good. Senator Noonan engaged a suite beginning the 24th. Well, this is only the 22nd. You're two days early. Anything wrong with being two days early? Why, no, sir. Everybody ought to be two days early. When this nation gets two days early, we'll be getting somewhere. Yes, sir. But unfortunately, this suite won't be vacated until day after tomorrow. Can you connect me with Senator Noonan? The senator's out of town. Uh, when will he be back? Well, he was due back the uh, day before yesterday, but he's... he's uh... Two days late. Yes, sir. Well, when Senator Noonan gets back late, tell him I was here early. Yes, sir. people here in answer to the ad in the paper about the apartment? Sure. I am, sir. I'll take it. I'm sorry, but the apartment is all rented. What do you mean, rented? Why, it isn't five o'clock yet. I'm very sorry, but the apartment is all rented. If there should be another vacancy, there'll be another ad. May I ask why you put us to the bother of coming here? No, you may not. Well, it's a good day. Where are going? You know what Admiral Farragut said? Damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. Damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. Damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead.
How do you do? How do you do? I'm Benjamin Dingle. Yes, you certainly are. I'm about the apartment. I'm sorry, I've already rented it. Just a moment, young lady. Do you think you know me well enough to lie to me? Yes. Even so, you shouldn't do it. Do you realize that practically most of the trouble in the world comes from people lying to people? Just take Hitler, for instance. He's I'm the... sorry, mister, but I prefer... Uh, Mr. Dingle. Mr. Dingle, I prefer sharing my apartment with a lady. That's fine, so would I. Uh, I'm sure you'd be happier someplace else. I've been there. Now, look, please, we think of my position. I can't go around just renting my apartment to anybody. I'm not just anybody. And besides, I'm only doing it because of the housing congestion in Washington. You said it. I, I think it's my patriotic duty to take somebody in because everything is so overcrowded. I'm overcrowded. Oh, why don't you go to the YMCA? I'm too old. Or the, the veterans' home. I'm too young. Well, I don't know what to say. Look, sooner or later, I'm going to rent half this apartment. Suppose I have a look at it, eh? Say... You're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? Once upon a time... I... Really, you wouldn't be happy here at all. Home is where you hang your hat. This way. Now, listen. Just looking. Just looking. It's no use your looking, because I made up my mind to rent to nobody but a woman. So let me ask you something. Would I ever want to wear your stockings? No. All right. Would I ever want to borrow your girdle or, or your red and yellow dancing slippers? Of course not. Well, any woman, no matter who, would insist upon borrowing that dress you got on right now. You know why? Because it's so pretty. I made it myself. Then how would you like it if she spilled a cocktail all over it at a party you couldn't go with her to because she'd borrowed it to go to it? In. She might have something that I could wear. Not her. Why not? Because she's so dumpy looking. Never has anything clean. That's why she's always borrowing your dresses. How do I know you'd be any better? Well, look at me. I'm neat, like a pin. Oh, let me stay. Well, look, I'll I... tell you what. We'll try it out for a week. End of the week comes. If you're not happy, we'll flip a coin to see who moves out. the morning schedule. Hmm? The morning schedule. Oh, the morning schedule. Yes, it's a matter of efficiency. You just follow this and we won't have any trouble. <laughs> Here, I'll show you. See, this is a floor plan of the apartment. Here's uh, my room, here's your room, here's the bathroom, and here's the kitchen. Now, my alarm goes off at 7 o'clock and we both get up. And at 7 1, I enter the bathroom. Then you go down to get the milk, and by 7 5, you started the coffee. One minute later, I leave the bathroom, and a minute after that, you enter the bathroom. Now, that's when I'm starting to dress. Three minutes later, I'm having my coffee, and a minute after that, at 7.12, you leave the bathroom. At 7.13, I put on my eggs, and I leave to finish dressing. Then you put on your shoes and take off my eggs at 7.16. At 7.17, you start to shave. At 7.18, I eat my eggs, and at 7.21, I'm in the bathroom fixing my hair, and at 7.24, you're in the kitchen putting on your eggs. At 7.25, you make your bed. 7.26, I make my bed. And then while you're eating your eggs, I take out the papers and cans. At 7.29, you're washing the dishes, and at 7.30, we're all finished. You see? It's really very simple. Do we do all this railroad time or eastern war time? When you hear my alarm go off, you'll know it's 7 o'clock. You're a very systematic girl, aren't you? I used to work in the office of facts and figures. Oh. Good night. Miss Milliken, by the way, why aren't you married, Miss Milliken? Well, really? Some high-type, clean-cut, nice young fellow. If you don't mind, Mr. Dingle. Of course, there's not many men about nowadays, but there's always one if you're out to get one. Maybe I don't want to get married. Well, don't you? Well, or maybe you do. Well, look, look, come, come, Miss Milliken. Make up your mind. Make up my mind? 
You know, damn the torpedoes! Full steam ahead! That's what Admiral Farragut said. Of all times, Miss Milliken, this is no time to be indecisive. In. If you expect to get along here, Mr. Tingle, you'll have to learn to mind your own business. In these times, Miss Milliken, everybody's business is everybody's business. War brings people closer together, you know. Not you and me, Mr. Dingle. Good night. Mind your own business. Who was in his own room minding his own business when who else came, of course, in? One more thing. Uh, we'd better not leave the apartment together in the morning. You mean because people might think? Well, not exactly, but people are so... Me? Of course. Thank you, Miss Milliken. I thank you indeed. Good night. Good night. Jimmy Doolittle flew over the seas. He wants to nip at the nip the knees. Clear the cloud and look below. Said by golly, this took I owe. Oh, Jimmy Doolittle. He understood. He do his duty. And he do it good. Somewhere Jimmy had heard it said. Damn the torpedoes, full steam ahead. Damn the torpedoes, full steam ahead. Damn the torpedoes, full steam ahead. Mr. Dingle. Mr. Dingle. Yes, Miss Milliken? Uh, do you smoke in bed? No, I sleep in bed. Do I smell smoke? Only the smoke of burning memories, Miss Milliken, rising from the smoldering embers of my romantic youth. Do you keep a diary, Miss Milliken? No, I don't. Of course not. Why do you ask? There are two kinds of people. Those who don't do what they want to do, so they write down in a diary about what they haven't done. And those who are too busy to write about it because they're out doing it. Full steam ahead. Full steam ahead. Full steam ahead. Terrible disposition in the morning, haven't you? Good morning. No. No what? Bring in the milk. Good morning. Oh, what are you doing out there? Come in. The paper! Oh, the paper, yes. Oh, my mistake. The paper. Mr. 
finger. You left me out. Pepper? Coffee. Do you have the coffee? Oh, the coffee, yes, yes, yes. Come in, coffee. Right along, coming right along. Damn the torpedoes, full steam ahead. Coffee, coffee. Coffee, there we are. Mercy. There's a war going on, Miss Milliken. Get dressed, Mr. Dingle. Stick the schedule. Oh, yes, get dressed, Mr. Dingle. Get dressed, Mr. Mr. Dingle? Yes, Miss Billiken? Don't forget to make your bed. Oh, oh, yes, make the bed, 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 oh, yes. Mr. Dingle, it's 7.30. If you're going downtown this morning, meet me downstairs at 7.32. I share a ride with Miss Hopkins at 7.32. We mustn't keep her waiting because at 7.34 we pick up Miss Ledbetter. Then at 7.37 we pick up Miss Taylor and Miss Johannes. Oh, my lunch. Mr. Dingle? Yes, Miss Milliken? Do you care to ride? Well, I've plenty of time. If you don't mind, I think I'll just roll downtown. Well, have it your own way. He's cooked out a turn up to make him a one.
You hear about the apartment? Yeah, it says half an apartment. Is it rented? You look like a high-type, clean-cut, nice young fella. No, it's not rented. Come in. It's really only half of half of an apartment, but it's not rented. Good. What's your name? Carter. Bill Carter? Joe Carter. I used to know a fellow named Bill Carter. It wasn't me. Don't you suppose I know that? What'd you ask for, then? I guess I know what Bill Carter looked like. Not like me. Oh, then you know Bill Carter. No, I don't. But he sounds like a great guy. In here. Hmm. Well, who's in here with me? Me. How much? Well, half of mine. Six dollars a week. I'll take it. It's about time you made up your mind. Five, six. How long are you going to be in town? Only a week. Well, that's too bad. Why? Eight girls to every fella. So they say. So it is. How long you been here? Not long. What do you do? I'm a well-to-do retired millionaire. How about you? Same. Say, what's that, a part of an airplane? A new type of garden bench. Looks like a propeller. It does? Say, what brought you here, Mr. Carter? You wrote? No, I mean, what's your job? I'm a mechanic. I work in a baby carriage factory. Where? Well, California. San Francisco? Burbank. Baby carriage factory, eh? Yep. Tokyo Baby Carriage Corporation. Plain and fancy baby carriages for carrying babies to Tokyo. Oh. Maybe you think this is none of my business. Maybe I do. Probably your name isn't even Bill Carter. Probably not. It's probably Joe Carter. Well, I'll take this one. Dingo.
Only one L in Dingo. <laughs> we must have been shopping. Let me help you. There you are, Miss Milligan. Miss Milligan, I've got something to tell Mr. you. Mr. Dingo, I've been thinking about it a great deal I'm today. I don't know how you'll take it. It just won't work, that's all. You, you'll have to give up your half the apartment. What's that? I can't have a man around the house. Well, it's now, I'm sorry, but I've made up my mind. You'll have to now, leave first to me, thing in the morning. Say, what's the matter with you, anyway? Nothing. I, I guess I'm just a bit jumpy, well, that's all. Calm down. You're making me jump, too. It's all right. It's nothing at all. I'm sorry. Hey. Come here a minute. What's the matter, Milligan? Dingo. Now, listen, Bill. Joe. Listen, Joe. Yeah? I've got something I've got to ask you. What? Well, you might think it a bit personal. Well, that's all right. <laughs> Never mind. I'll tell you later. It's all right. Huh? <laughs> that's all right. I'll tell you later. It's all Did you say something? I uh, uh, <coughs> water. Yes? Oh, I thought you'd finished. <coughs> no hurry.
You, uh, looking for someone? Who are you? How did you get in here? Well, I live here. Since when? Since this morning. You don't by any chance happen to know a gentleman by the name of Mr. Benjamin Dingle, do you? Meaning me, Miss Milligan? Yes, I mean you. What do you have to say for yourself? Have you met my friend Joe Carter? I just met Joe Carter. Oh, fine fella. Mr. Dingle, answer me this. Who was it located and leased this apartment? Who was it made that the landlord repapered and repainted? And who was it bought furniture and drapes and made rag rugs? And who considers this apartment her home? You. All right, then. Answer me this. Who was it allowed you to sublet half her apartment against her better judgment? You. Then why do you go behind my back and rent my apartment to this, this him? But I only rented half of my half. Otherwise, my friend Joe here would have had to sleep in the park. Otherwise, your friend Joe here is going to would have had to sleep in the park anyway. And you, too. Now, out. Out. Both of you. Wait a minute. I'm paid up for the week. I gave him six bucks. Well, give him back his six bucks. Well, I had to send some telegrams and... Uh... And I'm not going to move till I get my six bucks. Give him a check. Hmm? No checks. Now, look here. I don't owe you the six bucks. He owes you the six bucks. Now, listen, Miss Milligan. I paid you $12 for a week's rent, and I've only been here one night. Now, you give me back the difference, and I'll have the money to pay him with. That solves it. Yes. Only, well, I bought a hat. You bought a hat? Where's my money? In her hat. It is not. It's in his pocket, only he hasn't got it. Say, what do you think you're doing? Just looking at the hat. Pretty, isn't it? You've got a nerve. Looks pretty on her, too, doesn't it? Oh, it does not. That isn't even the way it goes on. Now, where were we? Looking for my six bucks. Well, I told you that I... Now, look, you don't think that I'm going to get... All right, stay. For just one week, remember. Come on, I'll show you the schedule. What schedule? For well, the steeplechase in the morning. Set your routine here. Just stick to the schedule, that's all I ask. Rather nice having a high type, clean cut, nice young fellow at table. Better than nobody. I'm used to nobody. You ought to have some high times here, Joe. Young fellas don't come a dime a dozen in Washington. Eight girls to every fellow. Yeah, well, I haven't got time for that. I'm only going to be in Washington only a week. Where are you going to? Where you came from? Where they send me. Who's they? The government. Oh. Too bad you're not going to be here regular. One less fella for the girls to look at. Like I told you, eight girls. Yeah, well, you're wasting your conversation. I'm not interested. Yes, but the girls are, eh, Miss Milliken? Those that haven't any men friends are, I suppose. But in the case of a girl who's engaged to be married... Engaged? You? Mr. Pendergast and I expect to be married in the very near future. Pendergast? 
Charles J. Pendergast. Who's he? Hasn't he got something to do with the housing plan? He most certainly has. He just happens to be the assistant regional coordinator of OPL, that's all. Is that good or bad? $8,600 a year. That's good. Furthermore, he's the youngest man ever to occupy the position of regional coordinator of OPL. How old is he? Only 42. 42? Only 42. 42 is a very safe, sane age. When a man has reached 42, he knows something, like Mr. Pendergast. He's an important man. How long have you been engaged? Two years, I bet. <sighs> 22 months. It's a long time for a girl to stick to one guy. That depends on whether she's engaged to be married or just engaged. Why did you wait so long? Mr. Pendergast and I felt it would be an unwise step to take in these times with world conditions so unsettled. World conditions are so unsettled, Miss Milliken, because people won't settle on things. They ought to stop pondering and push ahead. Damn the torpedoes! Full speed ahead! That's what Admiral Farragut said. Yeah, that was in Mobile Bay. You said you... that yesterday, Mr. Dingle. And I meant it yesterday, Miss Milliken. Mr. Pendergast and I don't need your advice. What did you say his first name was? Charles J. Well, don't you ever call him by it, like Charlie or Chuck or something? Call Mr. Pendergast Charlie. Sure, why not? Of course, you don't realize that Mr. Pendergast is the type man who has twice been to the White House to dinner. Worst food in Washington. Well, the president? Yes. I'll bet the president's wife calls him by his first name sometimes. You look messy. Huh? Don't you ever brush your hair? I suppose Mr. Pendergast combs his hair every hour on the hour. Mr. Pendergast has no hair. This project illustrates my point. If the employees are housed near the plants in which they work, a full working day can be saved each week. He's right. Time is the one thing we cannot manufacture, but we can make speed. That's true. And if this committee will cut out all the red tape and give me permission to go ahead, I'll get things done. That's the spirit. That's the spirit, Dingle. Senator Noonan. What is it? What Mr. Dingle proposes is impossible. There are contractual obligations that, that have to be cleared up. Then let whoever has to clear them up Clear them up while we are clearing up the ground around the defense plants for building. Yes, sir. We must do away with all forms and obligations. Cut out all the red tape. Full speed ahead. I'd like to call to Mr. Dingle's attention that Article 847532 states that the laws of a community must regulate the construction in that community. Now, that's a fact in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. You said you represent the OPL, didn't you? Precisely. Uh, I didn't catch your name. <clears throat> Pendergast. Not Charles J. Pendergast. That's correct. My golly, I should have known it. <laughs> to get the leopard lady single-handed. Bang! The door opens. Face to face with the leopard lady herself. You have arrived as I expected, Mr. Tracy. Now I will make a bargain with you. What fiendish plan have you now? With the death ray ours, we can conquer and rule the world. You and I, Dick Tracy. Count me out of your plan, Leopard Lady, for I mean to bring you to justice. Have you forgotten that I have the death ray? But without my help, it is powerless. Perhaps some boiling oil on your back will persuade you to help me. Gosh, is that Dick Tracy is sure playing with dynamite. Sure is. Is that the best you can do with your time? Mm, Got to keep up with what's going on. I missed two Sundays with Superman once, and I've never felt right since. Seems to me you might read something more beneficial. Like what? Like the editorials, for instance, or the columns. All well-informed people read the columnists. Such as Mr. Pendergast, I suppose. You're right, I suppose. Mr. Pendergast always reads the columnists. Are they funny? Sometimes, but no pictures. Oh, darn. Give me that section, will you? I want to see if anyone I know is being born today. Hey, listen to this. Born today to Mr. and Mrs. Charles J. Pendergast, a son. 
Mrs. Pendergast, the former Constance Milliken, is doing nicely. Mr. Pendergast is doing all right, too. He gets $8,600 a year. The baby arrived three minutes ahead of schedule. So Mr. Pendergast refused delivery. Funny. Very, very funny. Here, I'll help you. This conversation's much too witty for me. If you don't mind, I'll just leave you two up here to laugh at each other's jokes. What did I say? Any minute now, you might say something so funny, I might laugh myself to death. But I never said a thing. Maybe I said something. You are too weak from laughing. You might bring these things with you when you come down. What's she mad about? Because you and the man she's engaged to are not anything alike, and he ought to be. You were right, Mr. Dingle. A diary. Hey, I wouldn't fool with that if I were you. Say, hey, she's not mad with you. She likes you. You're nuts. Says you're dumb but cute. She's no bargain herself. Ooh, smart enough to get you going. I don't even know she's alive. How come then? Last night you said her name in your sleep. I did not. I did? Take my word. No, guys have to say anything in his sleep. Maybe I was hollering at her. No, you were cooing like this. Connie. Oh, you made me sick. Connie. All right, all right. Hey. She says you're good company and nice to have around. No fooling, boy. I'd put that away if I were you. She says you've turned out to be a high-type, clean-cut, nice young fellow. She does? Mm -hmm. She says that... Found your diary kicking about. You ought to be careful, Miss Milliken. You never know what kind of people are hanging around. I told you you shouldn't have done that. Now what are you going to do? Going to find out what she's going to do. You better go in and square yourself. Go ahead. You remember that stuff about the torpedoes? Your things down. That was a miserable thing to do. If there's anything that's cheap and and, and contemptible and contemptible, it's being caught reading somebody else's diary. If I caught anyone reading, and my... you had to read it in front of him. Connie, I was hardly listening. There's some things that are private, Mr. Dingle, and, and when people go p poking their nose in, it's just too much, that's all. And you have a very long nose, Mr. Dingle. 
I've tried to put up with you, but you've been not, doing nothing but pry and meddle ever since you, you've been here. So you, you just better go pack up your things, and when I get home from work tomorrow night, you'd, you'd better be moved out, once and for all, the both of you. Oh, it's you. Uh-huh. I thought the arrangements were that you... Uh... Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't have time to pack this morning. I had to go get my orders, so I came back to pack now. As long as I'm here, I'm... I might as well give you this. Miss Milligan, I have moved out. But I wish to exonerate Joseph Carter, my former roommate, in the south half of 2B of all implications of responsibility in being caught reading your diary. The fault is entirely mine, and Joseph Carter even protested my disgraceful action as follows. Quote, oh, I would not do that if I were you, unquote. And wouldn't either because he's such a high type, clean cut, nice. Yeah, yeah, nice. well, you can skip all that. I am, et cetera, et cetera. Benjamin Dingle. I'd like that for my files. What's the fixed up al alibi for? What are you kidding? Does this sound like me or Dingo? Well, how do I know you didn't write it? You don't. Well, if he wrote it, how do I know it's the truth? You don't. Only it's the truth. Well, I don't know what to believe. Yeah, well, I'm moving out anyway, so... Just to show you there's no hard feeling, I'd like to give you this. sort of genuine top grain cowhide traveling bag with all the accessories. This gadget pops down. Oh, isn't that lovely? Yeah, wow. all these things are fitted in here. Here you have, oh, I guess you'd know. Isn't that I don't know what that's oh. for. Those things in there. Then it has the uh, double locks. Oh, be careful. No, 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 it has a... Can't Are we it? sure? Mm, sure. It has a special 18-inch hinge, the man said, built in. Yeah. So all the different things here you can do with it. Double lock. This is for magazines and things, you see. Yeah, of course. Oh. 
secret. Certain government regulations, and they just won't let you tell people things like that. I know there are a lot of things that ought to be explained, but I'll write you about it. Uh, when are you leaving? In a couple of days. For Africa? In two days? Sure. Can't go with that on your face. Where are you going now? I won't look for another place. For just two days? Sure, can't sleep in the park. Well, uh, don't you think it's kind of silly to move just for two days? You mean? Oh, boy. Yeah, that's swell, because, you know, when I get there, they're liable to ask me where I spent my last two days. And, and if I said I spent my last two days looking for a place, they're liable to think I'm a dope. Yes, I guess they would. As you know, guys like that, they're liable to expect a fellow to spend his last two days going places and seeing the town. Sure. Well, uh, thanks for the bag. I mean, with somebody. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks for the bag. Say, do you think we could go out together and have dinner tonight? You forget I'm engaged, and uh, I don't think he'd like it. No. He wouldn't. But furthermore, uh, I think I have a date with him tonight. Oh. Uh, fixes that. Uh, Mr. Carter, what time have you? Uh, 7.30. Well, he's supposed to call at 8, you see, and sometimes he gets into a conference and he can't even telephone, so if that happens, naturally the date is off, so I'll wait for him till 8, and if he doesn't call, well, then I guess it would be all right, because, well, you're going to be here such a short time, and, and you're working for the government, and it's everyone's patriotic duty to do... It's the wrong number. Hello. Oh, it's you. Oh, well, what's the matter with you? Oh, that's too bad. Oh, you really ought to do something about that. Yeah, take care of yourself. Do something. Oh, just a minute. It's uh, for you, Mr. Dingle. No, Joe. Yes, well, you sound awful. You better take something for that. I don't know whether I can or not. I won't know late o'clock. I think I have a date. Yeah, well, if I don't, I'll meet you there. 
Okay, Millet. Dingo. Well, I think I'd better get dressed. Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> 